Hello and welcome back to Leander98 channel. Today I'm going to show you how to solidify a 3D model for 3D printing the right way. Okay, so what am I on about here? I'm not going to waste your time. So pretty much the best way, well actually, probably if you simply go and click on the solidify command on the modifier tab, type in your thickness that you'd like, Sometimes you'll get this to where the mesh just boils over. However, for the simple solution, you want your solidify command above your subdivision. Now, don't mind this right here. That doesn't do anything. However, having your solidify above the subdivision will erase the bo the yeah, the boil overs. So there's a simple answer. If you just needed to come to the video for that, there you go, you got your answer. Okay, how about an explanation? So pretty much what happens is that the order that these are placed matters. So if a subdivision is placed first, it's going to subdivide the mesh and then the mesh will be solidified. So that means there's a lot of extra stuff, actually more so, the solidify command just solidifies based on the subdivided mesh. Now what happens when the subdivide is behind the solidify? The model solidifies first and then it subdivides it so it rounds out the sharp edges that points out. Now, when you do that, now, we've got to get really microscopic here, but you are going to need some really close mesh to the outside of your sharp edges. At least one side, and this is because it's the little, it subdivides the, yeah, it subdivides the solidify. So that means it's going to round it off, and if you are in need of a sharp spot that needs to be planted on the bed or there for supports, you're going to need that. So it does make having to go back and modify this a little bit of a hassle, but that's why you usually save this step for last. Granted, you obviously want to see if your solidify boils over. Now, obviously, there is a slight limit to this. Now, if I'm sure if I go in and type 2, yeah, we get some boil over here, but com compared to that, we have 2 millimeters, which actually, this is 2 millimeters multiplied by the scale, so this is actually about 2.4 millimeters, which for even plastic FDM printing is extremely thick. So I just use 1.2. So 1.2 multiplied by this, we get roughly 1.5, 1.6 millimeters. That's plenty thick for a body shell. Not to mention, scale is down. This is a good size for resin too. Now at some point it gets too small and you won't be able to do it on FDM. Now how about this? Here's something else that you might not know about, but is pretty simple. If you have a manifold item, such as the spoiler here, see there's no openings to it. You know, I say that, but that's not the healthiest looking thing right there. Technically, that is already a solid. How the printer reads a solid object is if it is a manifold STL file. By solidifying this, that makes that a manifold STL file because there is a normal here and a normal here. When there is no solidify, this is the opposite of normal. So the printer will refuse to want to print that, not to mention it's paper thin. Sometimes the printers will still register a non-normal object as a normal so that it can print it, but that's normally after slicing and it will refuse to put supports on it. But if you have a manifold object, it'll register as a solid as well. So no need to use solidify here, which is great. All right, well, that's all you need to know. So thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.